What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I did a shorts video a few days ago featuring three discontinued fragrances that I feel they need to bring back. And I was told by multiple people that we need to do a long form video and expand on this topic a little bit more. So instead of three, it is now six. We doubled it. There's six fragrances in this video that I want to discuss with you on why I think, and they probably won't do, but I think they should bring these back, that they should have never been discontinued. Sales numbers aside, because that's why things get discontinued, but they're really freaking good, and we're going to talk about them. Stay tuned. So we might as well start with the three that were in the shorts video and we need to start with Boss Bottled Intense Eau de Parfum, the greatest Boss Bottled fragrance ever created. Why would I say that? Well, this is the truest version of an intense flanker of all time. Probably the closest thing was as far as being the perfect intense flanker is Intense de Drapoise and then I would say like Mont Blanc Legend Intense. That was actually a well-composed, like it really was, the intense version of Mont Blanc Legend. Sadly, I could have put that in here because that should come back. That's discontinued. That's phenomenal. Should have put that in here. But with this, it really does smell like the original, the warm apple pie, but here it's even warmer. It's not as sharp and woodsy. It's a little bit sweeter. The spice is a little bit more robust and rich, and the performance is bordering beast. It's pretty beastly for the most part. It's like a 10 to 12 hour fragrance in longevity, um, and it's pretty heavy on the CIs. Like this one lingers in the air. This, I hoard this. I don't even really wear it. I just kind of have it and collect it at this point because it's an absolute work of art. It's kind of a showpiece now. Some of you are laughing and like, oh man, you should wear it. And then some of you are like, no, no, I totally get it. I just enjoy it here and there. I wear it once in a blue moon. I just have so many fragrances. But I'll tell you what, if they were to bring this back and I could get a newer version, I would wear this one a lot more because prices have skyrocketed. There was a time when this was a bona fide cheapie. I paid $36 for this bottle a few years ago, a handful or so a year of years ago. And that's definitely not the case anymore. Go look on eBay and try to get this. Even the Eau Intense Eau de Toilette, which I've never tried and I heard is a waste of money compared to this, even that's going to fetch a pretty penny. And most people would enjoy that over Boss Number 6 because this truly is the intense version of Boss Number 6. Now look, the Eau de Parfum Flanker, it smells really good. It smells a little bit like Boss Bottle, but it's more of a modern take. This is more of just a richening of the original. Then you have Boss Bottle Parfum. It smells nothing like Boss Bottle. It's iris and leather and stuff. It smells good. doesn't smell like Boss Bottle. So again, this is still the ultimate concentration and intensity upgrade for that scent DNA where they've featured a ton of flankers over the years but none of them I don't think will ever be able to top Boss Bottle Intense Eau de Parfum. Bring it back. Now this one I put off getting a bottle for a long time. Now they're crazy expensive. Like I kept putting it off like oh the prices haven't gotten crazy. Ah oh, it's at retail now. I can still wait. Now that's not the case. The time's passed, so I'm kind of hoarding the rest of this. I have the official 20 ml travel size from Victor and Rolf. This is Spice Bomb Fresh. So you can see the juice. This is an actual 20 ml, if I remember correctly. It's 20 ml. Terrible glare. Yes, 20 ml. And this is a more grapefruit and sea salt dominant take on the original Spice Bomb. And I'm going to say this here and now. I don't have anything on this hand. I'm spraying it because it's so good, even though I'm hoarding the sprays. This is the only one I'm going to spray in this video of these six because this, it's, bring it back, Victor and Rolf. It is the best spice bomb they've ever made. Let that sink in for a second. I said it. That's how I feel. Some of you may agree. Some of you may not. Some of you may have never had the opportunity to try it and never will. It literally just smells like a fresher take on Spice Bomb, and it performs pretty much as well as my original Spice Bomb. I get like six or seven hours out of this, and it's fresher. It's still very spicy. It still smells like Spice Bomb, but works better in the warmer weather. It's always been the best fragrance from the line to wear in the warmer weather. Still has that spiced tobacco feel with some enhanced grapefruit and a airy, breezy, salty, sea salt accord. Just incredible stuff. 
incredible stuff. Maybe one day I'll pay the ridiculous prices and get a bottle. Uh, probably not. This is going to last me a really long time. It's officially sealed from the lab where the bottles come from and everything. So it's not like this is going to just spoil like a decant. Because decants spoil pretty quickly, even when done properly. This is done from the factory and the labs that Victor and Rolf uses. So I'm good. But I, I've got to say it here and now. Victor and Rolf, in my opinion, this is the best spice bomb you've ever put out. Spice bomb fresh, for the love of God. Bring it back. Now this is about as far-fetched as it gets. Uh, this isn't coming back, but boy, I wish it would have never went away. Because this is the first of four versions of this fragrance. Dior, Christian Dior is good for reformulating every couple of years. And by no means are any of the other three bad. They're all really good. They're all really good. And some people will say, oh no, this year's better, or that year's better. That's fine. But Dior Homme Sport 2008, the original, the first version... In my opinion, this is the best one. I hoard this 50 ml. Also, it looks the coolest because you can see through to the atomizer on the cap. It doesn't have the blacked out piece, and I just love that. I've always thought that was pretty cool looking about it, but this is very ginger and elemy heavy. Of course, you have some citruses and stuff. They didn't have iris in this one. The follow-up in 2012 had iris. Again, phenomenal. Some people may say that's the best. 2017 was all about sandalwood and blood orange, sharp orange. Beautiful. Probably my favorite to wear because it's so versatile. Some people would say that. The 2021 version. Kind of like a slightly smokier take on Dior Homme 2020. Yes, there is olibanum in there, and yes, it pops off of my skin. Again, Elemy is kind of the consistent... Elemy and Woods is the consistency across all four versions. But, I mean, this is the best smelling one. I'm calling it like it is here. Would I love to see it come back? Absolutely, I would go start spraying this bottle more, but it'll never happen. It'll never happen, unfortunately, and it's not that easy to find them. I'm glad I bought them when I did, because I have the majority of the fragrances in the Dior online, and this is one that I hold near and dear that on occasion, in warmer weather, I do wear. I wore it a few months ago was the last time I wore it. I want to say like two or three months ago was the last time I wore it. Gorgeous stuff, doesn't come across as synthetic as even like the modern Dior Homme 2020 that's full of Isoe Super. This doesn't have that smell. This is a more classy, somewhat classy sporty fragrance, I guess you could say, because they throw the word sport on there. It doesn't mean it's a great outdoor, high, high activity motion fragrance. This is a great daily wear work fragrance that can be a signature scent. Better than even Dior Homme 2020. I said it. That's how much I enjoy this one. Will it ever come back? Absolutely not. Would I love to see it? Of course. The best of the line, in my opinion, Dior Homme Sport 2008. So here's one that I know a lot of you that have smelled it would agree. Man, they should have never got rid of this because it's still the best. Look, look, the Parfum, I think, like 1B to this being 1A for my favorite line. This is still the king of the mountain for 1 million. It's pre -vague. One million privé. I mean, this should have never left. I mean, one million Lucky's still in the market. Why the hell isn't this? This is fall, autumn season in a bottle. It's spicy cinnamon, tobacco, amber, a little bit of that one million sweetness. Really good performance. Oh, so good. So good. Now, I do have another 50 ml that's sealed. Because I got these for 40 bucks a piece at Marshall's back when I lived in Texas years ago. Like a year before they discontinued it. I got lucky. God, it's the smell of floating in the air. This is phenomenal. This is one of the better designer tobaccos. Like mass appealing designer market stuff. Like Macy's fragrance counter designer. That, you know, general populist marketed stuff. This is one of the best that's ever had a tobacco note. Spicy, sweet, earthy, ambery. Amazing. Amazing. I don't, I don't know. They, look, they don't miss, in my opinion, with the one million line. One after another, they put out great flankers. They do. They've done some great work with this line over the years. But in my opinion, this was the one. The one from the one million line. For the love of God, Raban, as it's known now, it's no longer Paco Raban. Marketing, right? I don't, I don't, whatever. Bring it back. Bring it back in some form or fashion because it's that good. 
One million Privé. One that, who knows, I mean, we could always hold out hope for it, right? It's probably not going to happen, but I do have two bottles, and I may never open the 60 ml that I have that's sealed, because it's 3.7. I don't wear all that much, but I appreciate this fragrance. I think it's one of the best leafy aromatic tobaccos, masculine tobaccos ever, ever. Aramis Tobacco Reserve. This is gorgeous. This is beautiful. It dries down a little sweet, but it's a very leafy, spicy, dry tobacco aromatic smell. So good. Spiced at the top. Uber masculine. Like you would expect from Aramis. It's got that manly feel to it. Uh, this is cigar lounge type of tobacco. This is refined. This is blazer sport jacket type of stuff. This is Rolex watch. This is that big beard, you know, money clip. This is that guy. This is that guy. This is the guy who's wearing an old steel Submariner, you know. <laughs> That's what I envision. Or maybe a Daytona, if you like chronographs. Uh, immensely powerful, too. There was a time these were showing up at the rack stores. I got this at TJ Maxx for 30 bucks for the 3.7. Went home, opened it, sprayed it. Fell in love. Next time I went to TJ Maxx, they had a 60 ml for 20 bucks. I bought it. And I saw the big bottle again later, but I knew I was never going to go through this. But just in case, while I could get it cheap, I jumped on it. And I'm glad I did, but I'll probably never use it. I get it. I understand. There's really no necessary, not necessary to have it. But man, I don't need it to come back because I've got plenty. I've got a lifetime and then some of sprays of the fragrance. But for you guys that don't have it and would like to experience it, I want it to come back for you because this is that good. This is that good. This is one of the best tobacco fragrances I've ever seen. This is top five all-time tobacco for me. That should give you some perspective. Aramis, come on now. Bring me back the heat. This is the real heat in a bottle. It's tobacco reserve. Last but not least, it saddened me. Enough people have told me this is discontinued and the prices have skyrocketed to where I believe it. I believe it. I have a backup bottle that's still sealed, that I will get to that backup bottle. 100 ml, I paid $12.99 at Burlington for about a year and a half ago before it apparently got discontinued. I paid $13 on eBay for this 50 ml. It's the greatest atomizer in the game. Well, it used to be, anyways. Sean John 3 a.m. One of the better freshies ever. Unique, immensely fresh, and then the best part, that. Pressure sensitive. They're like, oh no, you're wasting sprays. I have a backup 100 ml. It's okay. I'm covered, guys. Beautiful citric grapefruit smell. A little bit of this woody fig leaf. Like a, it adds more of a bitter woody tone than anything else. Soft, supple leather feel. Gin and tonic. Crisp smell. Average, slightly below average. Four or five hour fragrance at best in longevity. About an hour solid of projection. Probably the best celebrity fragrance of all time. In my opinion, of course. There's others that would say that this is their favorite. That's Sean, old Sean John Unforgivable was better. Hey, we all have our picks. I'm saying for me, greatest celebrity fragrance of all time. And it was a straight up cheapy gem for years. That is not the case anymore. Diddy, come on. You probably don't even own the rights to this name anymore in, in this company. Diddy. P. Diddy. Puff Daddy. Sean Combs. Whatever you want to say his name. Come on. Sean Puffy Combs. All the different names. It's all about the Benjamins, right? It's all about the Benjamins, baby. Bring it back and make some money. This fragrance is worthy of still being on the market for the $13 we were paying for it. Even if you brought it back for $30 and it was a discount for $30, people would jump on it because that's way cheaper than what it's going for now. But if you've never experienced this, I, man, I genuinely, I'm sad for you. That sucks, and I wish you could because... This is one of the most unique fresh fragrances that was a steel bargain hidden gem for the longest time. That literally, we're going to do it one more time, is the greatest. It dwarfs Dior's atomizers, in my opinion. Look at this. Puts out a lot. Long stream, wide mist, evenly distributed, pressure sensitive. Putting out a phenomenal smell. Man, sad. John John, bring back 3 a.m. Well, that's the six that I had for you guys. And kind of one bonus, we did talk a little bit about Mont Blanc Legend Intense. We won't go too much further because I, I could have went and run and grab it. But eh. let's keep it intimate with the six fragrances that I had planned for this video. So 
Until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. But of these six, what do you have experience with? And do you agree with me or disagree with me or kind of fall somewhere in the middle for the ones you have tried? Do you have all six? Do you have none of them? Did you have them in the past? Or did you miss out and you wish you could have tried them because they sound incredible? Or maybe I made them sound incredible. Maybe I made them sound like crap. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not watching this video. I'm making this video. But I appreciate you guys being here. And until next time, I will say, if you get lucky enough to get your hands on any of the six fragrances that I featured in this video and you give them a spray now, you'll probably end up thanking me later because you'll understand why I think they need to bring these discontinued gems back. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.